Hi there, I'm Dr. Terry Shaneyfeld for UAB School of Medicine. Now before we can launch into running any analyses on our cleaned up data set, we need to understand some basic types of variables and their scales and measurement. And this is important because one of the ways we choose statistical tests is based on the scale of measurement of the data. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the contact me section of my blog, which is ebmteacher.com. So what are variables? Well, variables are just characteristics of whatever we're studying that can be observed and measured. And there are two main types of variables in a study, dependent variables and independent variables. A dependent variable is the outcome of your study. As researchers, we don't manipulate this. We just observe to see what effect the independent variables have on it. Now, a dependent variable is a term that tends to be used in the medical literature. and the social sciences and some other fields, other terms are used for this type of variable. So you'll have to realize that when you read some other types of studies from other fields. And it can sometimes be called a criterion variable and a response variable. Now, I've never seen the outcome variable study called a Y variable. But when plotting this type of variable in a figure, the outcome variable tends to be placed along the Y axis. Independent variables, these are purported to have some effect on the dependent variable, and as such, they're manipulated by the researcher to see what effect they have on the dependent variable. Now, again, an independent variable tends to be a term we use in the medical literature and some other fields, other terms for use for this type of variable, including a predictor variable. Like before, I've never seen the predictor variable called an X variable, but when you plot this type of variable in a figure, we tend to place it along the X axis. So this is a general overview of the organization of data. Data can be quantitative or qualitative. Quantitative values are numeric. They represent a measurable quality. On the other hand, qualitative values take on values that are only names or labels. Quantitative data can then be further divided into discrete and continuous data. Discrete data can only take on a limited number of values and usually involves whole numbers. For example, the number of children in a family. Continuous variables can take on almost a limitless value between its minimum and maximum values. So for example, weight is a continuous variable. A person could weigh 180 pounds, or they could be 180.1 or 180.2, etc. And weight really could be measured out to the millionth or greater decimal point if you wanted to, and if you could measure it that way. So it can really be anywhere on that continuum. An example of qualitative value is a person's name or race or eye color. They're just labels. They have no real measurable properties. Now, if we count the number of a certain race in a sample in a study, we are now conducting um, or, excuse me, now converting this qualitative variable into a quantitative one. So there are different scales of measurement or levels of measurement that a variable can be measured at. And there are four general scales of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And this is in order from simplest to most complex. So let's look at each of them individually. So nominal data are just names or labels with no inherent ordering or ranking. So for example, gender, gender is traditionally labeled as male and female. There's no inherent ordering there as one gender isn't better than another, though some might argue otherwise. And this is the same with the other variables shown here. Ordinal data is a little more complex because it's rank ordered, indicating a hierarchy, but the differences between the ranks are either not known or measurable or they're just not equal. So for example, patients are often asked to rank their pain on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being no pain or 10 being the worst imaginable pain. A score of 5 is worse than a score of 4, but by how much? Also is the difference between a score of 2 to 3 the same as the difference between a score of 8 to 9? We really don't know and it really can't be measured. All we can say that is a higher score means more pain than a lower score. And this can also be said of the other examples I give here. Interval data is also rank ordered, but now the differences between the values is equal and meaningful. But it's important to know that interval data has no true zero point. So for example, 80 degrees Fahrenheit temperature is greater than 70 degrees. And the difference between 70 and 80 degrees is the same as the difference between 50 and 60 degrees. But there's no true zero point on the Fahrenheit or Celsius scales. A, a temperature of zero Fahrenheit doesn't mean there's an absence of temperature. Time on a clock also doesn't have a true zero time. Now, an interesting thing is while an individual Likert question is ordinal, 
if you add up multiple Likert questions to make a score, that score now is interval data, which is, as we'll talk about later, is better or more easily analyzed in statistical packages than ordinal data. And for a discussion of this, because this often leads to some controversy, Norman has an excellent discussion of this in Advances in Health Science Education uh, from 2010, page 625. And I recommend Googling that. It's freely available on the web as for a good discussion of Likert scales and Likert uh, items. Finally, we have ratio data that is basically interval data that has a true zero point. So for example, weight is ratio data as you can have zero grams of something, meaning you don't have any of it. There's also a true zero point in the Kelvin scale of temperature, and you can also make zero income. So now if we put this all together, we can see that discrete data, which is typically uh, whole numbers that can only take on a limited number of values, can be measured on an ordinal or an interval scale. So for an ordinal scale, you can have a five-point pain scale. An example of an interval scale here may be the number of males in a family. Continuous data can be measured on the interval or ratio scales. An example of interval data would be, say, blood pressure, and ratio data would be income. Qualitative, qualitative data can be nominal, which is just, again, names like eye color, or ordinal. And here, an example of ordinal qualitative data would be high school classification, like freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior scales. So I hope this has helped you understand uh, the different types of variables that exist and the level of measurement of these variables, because this will be important when we choose a statistical test.